students, and welcome to the activity for today called the Prairie Food Web. So these instructions will be fairly brief, so I'm going to let the, let you kind of, uh, you know, figure out how to do this. There's also a short video that was made by Mr. Duncan, but I'll give you some pointers here. So in the space below, you're going to create a food web, including all of the organisms from a chart. You're going to move the organisms to the appropriate spots, putting the producers at the bottom, as I've done for the most part, though you'll probably want to put the grass, you know, towards the bottom. And then your herbivores, so whatever eats that stuff, whatever eats that stuff, uh, like the producers, should likely be above that. And then whatever eats the other stuff, or I should say whatever eats the primary consumers, like our prairie dog and our mouse, should be above there, like our snake. And then whatever eats our secondary consumers would be there. So what you're kind of looking for is something that looks to the effect of this. And knowing that your mushroom, which is a decomposer, could eat all of these things once it's broken down. That's what the purpose of this bracket is. So obviously the energy for the dandelion would go from the sun. Let me uh, fix that. And if we get another arrow, we could insert another arrow to go from the sun to the clover, so on and so forth. We could make another arrow. Let's just keep making new arrows. It's a little bit hard to hard to copy them. The clover would get give its energy to the mouse. The mouse would eat that. Then the snake would eat the mouse, for example. All right. So, and that's kind of what we're looking for there. So make sure you put arrows next to all the possible things that could eat what. And know that the hawk could also eat the prairie dog directly without eating the snake. So that is an option. So that's an option there. However, the snake could eat the prairie dog as well. So, and think about the grasshopper. The grasshopper, it's named that because it's going to eat the grass. It hops in the grass and it eats on the grass. Eats the grass. If I need another arrow. Yeah, so the arrow part can be kind of tedious, but uh, just get some practice with that. So that's kind of what we're looking for there. But try to make some more connections even than that because the prairie dog is going to have to eat something. So for example, the prairie dog might eat the dandelion, and the prairie dog might also eat the clover. So think about all the kind of complex combinations that we could have here. And that's what makes it a web, certainly. And the grasshopper maybe will eat the clover as well, or the, or the dandelion as well. If there wasn't a whole lot of grass, it could, or it could eat the clover. So that's really what I'm looking for on this part. And making sure that the sun is at the bottom. Or you could put the sun up in the corner like our typical uh, art picture. So there's a little fun little food web. So what do the arrows in a food web represent? So think about that one. It's going to have something to do with energy. Are the second order consumers in the food web carnivores or omnivores? Explain why this is so. So first order consumers would be whatever's eating the herbivores. So first order consumers would be the grasshopper, the prairie dog, and the mouse. Second order consumers be the snake. So is the snake a carnivore or an omnivore? So I'm I'm thinking they're definitely going to be a carnivore. So I'll give you that one. So explain why that is. Are they eating plants or, or plants and animals? Think about the food chain in which a hawk eats a snake. In this food chain, the hawk is a third order consumer. What do you think this means? So what does third order mean? So we have first order, second order, third order. What does that mean? And then on our last slide, why is it possible for a prairie dog to be a first order consumer 
and a second order consumer at the same time. All right, so kind of think about, uh, maybe think about the example of if we were to move the prairie dog here and the prairie dog could eat the grasshopper as well. So think about why in this example, the prairie dog might be a second and a first, right? So it's eating the herbivores and it's also eating the first, um, the primary consumers, right? So think about that, write something to that effect. Suppose all of the grasshoppers in the food web are killed by an insect spray. Predict how this might affect the other organisms in the food web. So if the grasshoppers are gone, all the stuff that's eating the grasshoppers probably going to be affected. So write about what's going to be affected and how it's going to be affected. None of the organisms in this food web could exist without the energy from the blank. So remember where the energy is coming from. So the producers are at the bottom of the food chain. Eventually all the energy comes from the sun, but no energy or no organisms could exist without the blank. So think about what we've talked about. What's that bottom level of the food chain going to be? All right, everybody, that's a quick summary and kind of um, virtual kind of guide for you as you complete this activity. Complete that. Um, so fill in the parts that I didn't help you out with. And we will, I will take a look at that. So that's a quick activity to get you started thinking about what a food web is. All right, thanks, everybody. Have a great day.